I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. Request comes in eight months ago. Hey, Rick, can you do a video showing us how to make vintage t-shirt designs? I said, sure. What kind? No specific design. Looking for something old sports or movies. Thought this could make a good Inkscape tutorial to walk through some of the basics. We're going to do this Palm Springs, California Hawks, a pretend sports team from back in the 30s. One way to make your workflow easier is to have some type of structure. I like to start with the center graphic, and we'll use trace bitmap to create that vector graphic. I'll show you how to wrap text around a circle and we'll pair it with a different typeface, this old fashioned Hawks, with the bonus of making one of these retro baseball tails like the Dodgers logo. And one thing I noticed that helps with sales of vintage designs, if you add a real specific deep cut component like the name of the Californian desert where you can find Palm Springs, for some reason that makes the wearer feel like I'm in the know. All right, let's get to designing. We're gonna do the trace bitmap part. This source image is actually coming from pexels.com. I have a link to it in the description below. Sometimes these links break. It's actually a bald eagle, but we're going to use it as a hawk, a little bit of artistic license there. We need to extract this and make it a vector asset. We'll do that with path, trace bitmap. Here is the menu. You want to be on single scan, brightness cutoff. The threshold just tells Inkscape how much of the darkness do you want to extract from the image. This is your preview area. 0.45 is good. Let's bump it up to 0.53. Three, I thought looked all right. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be kind of a vintage look like a wood cut. It's okay to have some bleed on it. Make sure you have speckles, smooth corners, and optimize all selected. Hit apply. And that's it. Okay, so what we just got was if you double click it, all these nodes were created by Inkscape to make the new design. First thing you want to do is click and drag over the parts you don't want. Delete. Let's open up our fill and stroke menu and we can change it to this blue that I brought in. I'll have these color codes in the description also. I want the whole thing to be in profile. So the only part messed up is the tail. So we'll actually use the reflection tail down here. Double click. I'm just dragging a box over these nodes that I want. They're selected. I'll go to edit, copy, get off of the whole thing. So nothing is selected, edit, paste in place. That's what I want. This should actually be cleaned up a tad. Flip it and drag it wherever you want it. We do have to make it all one path with the tail selected, hold shift, grab the whole body, path, union. And <laughs> there's our eagle. Did I say eagle? It's now a hawk. Let's write Palm Springs on a curve. I'm gonna draw open what we're gonna use as a guide circle. It's just a circle. There's no fill on it. I happen to make it green because I like to make my throwaway objects green. We'll go to the edit text tool. The typeface I'm using is called Babis Noya. And I'll write Palm Springs, California. Let's change it to bold. Another way you can add a little bit more thickness on the fill and stroke tab, go over to stroke. The stroke was set to green so you can see the extra thickness. Let's just change that color to, actually we'll make the color the red that we want and we'll make the fill also that red. Just by eyeballing, it looks like the kerning's crunched in. Let's check if I click on edit text for the spacing. Yep, it's negative five. Make that zero, that's better. With the text selected, hold shift, grab your guide circle text put on path it bends around the guide circle if you click only the guide circle you can then spin it into place i can grab the guide circle to put it where i want it at this point we should add the alignment menu it's this icon right here this bar graph thing or you can go to object align and distribute since i'm working on the page i'm going to have relative to page selected and if i hit this part right here it centers on the vertical axis i should do the same for the hawk eagle and make him or her bigger i like having the guide circle because even if it's in the warped format you can still make changes to it for example it needs to be thicker so if i go to the stroke style width is set to 0.265 let's change that to a full one millimeter there you go back to selecting the hawk on the hierarchy let's bring it to the top i actually want to layer it on top of the text without using transparency instead if i'm on the fill and stroke menu down here on blend mode let's change it from normal to multiply you see what that did when I first started making these tutorials, I forgot to mention when you bend text, you have to lock it in. To do that, you click on the text once you have it the way you like it and go to path, 
object to path. Now I can delete the guide circle. I'm going to pair this typeface with a different one to give it that retro vintage look. I got it from defont.com. It's 100% free. However, the author notes it's a demo font and that's going to come in key when I show you what happens when you first use it. If you need help getting the font into Inkscape, let me know. Logos by Nick just did a tutorial that shows how to do it on the fly, but you can also install it on your computer so it's always there. Let's go to the edit text and write Hawks. Here we see the Bebes Noe. This is a very stable font. It behaves the way it should behave. With the demo font, when I switch it over to Frodmile, did you see what happened there? When it was a smaller size, the bottom of the letters looked great. And now that I made it bigger, it's not behaving right. The S is kind of messed up and the bottom of the H is missing. If this happens to you, one way to get around it is you can rotate it. It's a hack, but it corrected it. Also, the S is messed up. If I put the cursor in between the K and the S, you can see it's having trouble connecting these two pieces. So we'll move it independently. We have it selected, go up to path, object to path. Now they are each their own thing and I can drag this into place. I'll position it about where I want it. Now we can go back up to path, combine, and we'll make that red. Same thing here. I think I want it to be a little bit thicker. So on stroke style, we'll add a stroke. We'll go with 1.0 millimeters in hierarchy, drop it to the bottom. I'm moving it over slightly actually, because I know when I put the tail in, it'll change the way it's centered up. First, let's put in the 1938 and the special deep cut. I don't need to make a guide circle again, 1938. I want this one to be enter. Bold looks good. And check out this other method. I'm gonna to go to the Bezier pen and just make a straight line. I have the straight line selected, hold shift, take my 1938 text, put on path. Click over to edit paths by node and watch what you can do. I can bend that, bend that line anywhere. I want a simple curve, so I'll just raise it up in the center. I like this method. You can still change things up, change the color to lock it in path object to path, get rid of that guide. To speed things up, I'll add the deep cut with a snap. I made it with the exact same method, text put on path. Now we can add that vintage retro tail. We're gonna freehand it with the Bezier pen tool. If you've never used the Bezier pen, I have a dedicated tutorial called Intro to Bezier pen. Once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. It does help to restrict the amount of nodes that you create. So why don't we just stick to a maximum of eight? I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Go to edit paths by node and you'll see it just takes a little finessing. I'll bend this one in. I'll click on this elbow here and this icon lets you make that node smooth. Same for this one, click on it, make it smooth. And I've kind of learned just to go easy with the handles. After you make it smooth, it looks bad. If you retract it closer to the node, it pulls things in. If you pull it further out, it makes it wider. It's going to look worse before it looks better. I probably did a time jump there. You can play around with it as much as you want. You can also get pre-made tails. I like to make them by hand because it's just kind of fun to do. I'm tempted to play around with this alignment, except if you look at old retro vintage, old school t-shirts, sometimes the imperfection is part of the charms. I'm gonna leave it messed up. Let's pretend this was made by hand before computers had all this perfect alignment. And now let's group the whole thing. I just saw a recent Logos by Nick tutorial that showed a way to do distress with masking. So let's use it. I think it's a great time saver. The way it works is first you gotta bring in your distress. I'm gonna go back to Pexels. The link to this photo will be in the description below. This part is not the logos by Nick part. First, I just have to extract my distress. On trace bitmap for brightness cutoff, it's gonna take out the darkness. So instead we'll invert it. That way it takes out the light, these little speckles for us. And that's gonna be too distress. It'll mess up our graphic. Let's change it to 0.637. That's better, just like that, apply. Okay, there is our distress. Say goodbye to the photo and we need to scale it way down. Okay, check out what I learned from Logos by Nick. If I have my main graphic selected, I'll hold shift and I'll get my distress. Go up to object, mask, set inverse mask. Uh-oh, not respond, there it goes. Look at that, so simple. Thank you Logos by Nick. If there's something you'd like to see me do in Inkscape, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for all your suggestions and we'll see you next time.